Tomáš Bukovský, Avoy MU Brno, goalkeeper, organization team. The idea was born a couple of years ago as our way to say thank you to the teams who had invited us to play at their tournaments. So this year we finally got our ducks in a row, managed the finances and I have to say that we never expected it would turn out to be such a big event. Lukáš Masilko, Avoy MU Brno, organization team. It has been the first tournament of this type in the Czech Republic, a first international blind football tournament ever organized in this country. We thought it was getting a bit awkward to be invited to tournaments all the time and not to organize one ourselves, so we decided to finally do it. I don't think it was difficult to get the teams interested. Several teams were happy to participate. To get the money for the whole thing was quite difficult. We started to put it all together in the spring of 2012, one year before the tournament. But it was not until September that we got the first confirmation of some funding. And then it all started to fall into place. We managed to get money from several other sources. Itka Gratslíková, Avoy MU Brno, navigator behind the goal, organization team. Za zmínku stojí to, jak se sem vlastně dostali ti Brazilci, že to bylo spíš náhodou. The Brazilian team, who won the London Paralympics, was originally not supposed to come at all. Originally, we invited a French team from saint monde We advertised the tournament on Facebook and the Brazilian coach Gabriel Mayer noticed it, got in touch and suggested the Brazilian team could come as well, because the French team came second at the Paralympics. So it was interesting for Brazil to play a team on a similar level. A month before the tournament, the date of the European Championship was released. It turned out it clashed with our tournament. This meant that the saint monde team couldn't come. Around the same time, Brazil confirmed they were coming. 
But two weeks before the tournament, they still didn't book their flight. I hardly slept at that time. <laughs> Lukáš má sílko. To bring the Golden Paralympic team from Brazil to Europe for this type of tournament, no one has ever done anything like this. We realized that this would make the event very special. To have a chance to see their players and coaches in action and to see that they really take it seriously, that they do not come to just kick some ball, but to actually win. It was really amazing to watch. Petra Pakostová, Czech TV. I would never have believed that someone who cannot see can actually run around the pitch, engage in a combination play, pass the ball, change direction. It looks as if the players could actually see, as if they had no impairment whatsoever. I really admire them. Michaela Poláková, Czech TV. As a sighted person, I cannot even imagine being able to do the things they do on the pitch. Lukáš má sílko. People often don't know the difference between football and futsal. Futsal is played by four outfield players plus a goalkeeper, and the pitch is smaller. Futsal for the blind, or blind football, is played by players who are totally blind. So if there are some players who are partially sighted, they must wear blindfolds so that no player on the pitch has any visual orientation during the game. Because the players cannot see each other, they must call out voy when moving around the pitch so that the player with the ball knows that there are players near him. The goalkeepers are the only sighted players on the pitch, but they are confined to a small goal area, 2 by 5 meters, and they cannot score a goal. Apart from the players and the goalkeeper, each team has two navigators. One of them is a coach who stands by the halfway line by the pitch and navigates the players in the middle third. The attacking third is covered by the navigator behind the other team's goal, who navigates the footballers in the attacking third. The defensive third is covered by the sighted goalkeeper. So there are three sighted people who cooperate with the players during the game. Jan Mrázek, Avoy MU Brno, forward. Já se během hry orientuju buď buď pomocí mantinelu anebo pomocí navigátorů. I use the sideboards around the pitch or the navigators to move around. The halfway line coach tells me where the ball is going from the goalkeeper and the other team's players, so that I know which sideboard to go to. Or when I'm attacking, the navigator behind the goal tells me where to go and when to shoot. Takže se orientuju. Jitka Graclíková. My job is to navigate the forwards to get them in the best scoring position. I try to describe the situation on the pitch as clearly as possible. If the player is in a position to score a goal, I say shoot. If they have moved past the shooting angle, I say curve, which means they have to go back to get in the scoring position. I say, you're alone, if I see there are no defenders and there is a chance to score a goal. I say, dodge, if there is a player right in front of him. 
The most difficult thing for me was to switch the point of view in my head, to see the situation on the pitch from the point of view of the players, to reverse left and right. It was quite difficult at first, and it took me some time to learn. Bogdan Miku, BFC Wooster, coach. I learned from them how, how accurate you have to be when you, when you coach disabled footballers during a game. Every, every information has to be 100% accurate, the timing has to be uh, set up proper in order for them to, to do the effective, the effective technique at the right time so you can score the goal, do the right decision to pass and so on and so on. So being, on, being around on the pitch involves a lot of excitement. It's, it's hard because you, you have the desire to get in there and do the pass by yourself, but um, you have to get, get yourself together focus and um, offer the best information for the players so they can do it so they can do it because they're the only ones who, who have the power to to do something in a game Mark Evans BFC Booster goalkeeper I've been in the team for about five years now um, playing goal as the only sighted player on the team so there's a lot of pressure on me with the communication with people like Mark playing at the back um, Lukáš má sílko. The goal area is quite small, just two meters to the front of the goal. So if an attacking player gets three or four meters in front of the goalkeeper, he doesn't have a chance to stop the incoming shot, even though he is sighted. The goal is three meters wide and the shooter uses a toe kick technique which means that the shot is unpredictable and it is pretty hard. So unless the ball hits the goalkeeper, it usually ends up in the goal. Tomáš Bukovský. I have to follow the ball till the very last second and not get distracted by the foot movement because it can be deceiving. I have to focus exclusively on the ball. My job is to navigate the defense in the defensive third, which is usually marked. I tell my players which direction the opponent's attackers are coming from, which of my defenders should follow which striker, etc. Also, I often have to tell them what my position is, so that they know where the goal is. Russell well done, BFC Booster, coach. I, I think for me, it's just how they approach the game, so some coaches might go in with a fiery temper or they might be upbeat rather, some coaches might be calm, so it all depends on how they motivate their players to perform to their best. Martin Jelinek, Avoy MU Brno, coach. Strašně důležitý je, aby hráči byli zvyklí na mě, na můj styl komunikace. One of the most important things is that the players know me and my communication style. It is crucial to be concise, to use as few words as possible, so clear and effective instructions are key. Often the players use the goalkeeper and the coach to get their bearings on the pitch, to know which side they are facing. So I try to give them this information and some basic instructions how to play, what to do in the following seconds. But not too much information. I try not to use whole sentences, just simple trained situations that require a standard procedure. Like when they can't find the ball, I try to explain where the ball is, if it is somewhere near them, and then some basic cues. For example, when I say switch, they know they have to move the ball from one sideboard to the other, because the other side has fewer opposition players. With just this one word, I give them information that can lead to scoring a goal. So there are some default situations which can be triggered by a simple instruction which we have agreed on before. Jan Mrázek. Pro mě nejtěžší věc je asi orientace mezi hráči na hřišti. Jakoby odhadnout, jestli ten hráč je ode mě 2 metry nebo 6 metrů, jestli ještě můžu jít pár kroků k němu. For me, the most difficult thing is to get my bearings on the pitch, to know whether I am standing 2 or 6 meters from some other player, if I can move closer and then dodge, or whether I have to dodge right now, or if the other player is close enough to take the ball, 
or if the other two players are standing too close for me to go between them with the ball. The pitch is 800 square meters, so a pretty large ground to cover, and it is easy to lose one's way, so it took me some time to learn to know my position at any given point in the game, but it is getting better now. Aleš Moravec a Voj M.U. Brno, midfielder. Můj úkol, protože jsem středový hráč, tak můj úkol je vlastně jednak vypomáhat obraně. My job as a midfielder is to help both the defenders and the strikers, which means a lot of running. Of course, it gets a bit dangerous at times, but we should be able to prevent collisions by shouting voj. Sometimes it doesn't work out and there is a clash, but that is part of the game. Někdy se to nepovede a někdy přijde i k tomu střetu, ale to prostě k té hře patří. Mark Turnem, BFC Wooster, defender. You can never be scared. If you if you're scared then you shouldn't be on the pitch, basically. You should you got you've got to take the rough with the smooth. I think some of it is your character, but it's something you can it comes with confidence. A lot of it is confidence. Um if you're if you're willing to go into that tackle, then you and you know, you've got to take you've got to take those bruises. It is quite a you know, it's a rough sport in the end. Andrew Bryant BFC Wooster forward. Basically, you just need to keep talking, let everybody else on the pitch know exactly where you are, because if you don't, then you're going to get accidents. Um, you know, so yeah, you get people crashing into each other, and then you know, you're just wandering around the pitch, you know, not even knowing who you are, and you know, just like losing the spell of dance, it's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, you just need to be really careful and uh, talk all the time, because then you can actually get some strategy going. Martin Jelinek. For me, it is important that the game is nice to look at. It is not just about the result, but about playing dynamically in the attacking third, about playing the kind of football that people enjoy watching. It should be fun for the players and the audience as well. I'd like for people to understand that it is a really interesting game. David Mycock, BFC Wooster, head coach. I've come from a long way, a little northern town in England, um, playing with people who are exceptional footballers and then playing with people who cannot even control and travel. So the emotion that runs through being able to help these people have a great opportunity to come here is phenomenal. So for me, it's to keep in control of myself, to try and help others, to give something to them that they wouldn't necessarily have, and not to try and spoil that in any way by being a dickhead pissed up. I play to win, I play to love it, and I enjoy it. And I try and get that camaraderie between everybody, you know? Yeah, you can observe the players and observe their movements, but when you think you've observed them, they come out with something new. So it's it, it's very good to observe, and you can you can learn from other coaches as well. So the German coaches, from the Czech coaches, you can learn so much from them. And we saw it with Brazil in that last game. Their coach, he he, he went in, he got them motivated through not having a go, but raising his voice, really motivating his team, and they, they played really well in that last game. Bogdan Miku. It's a great match, man. Yeah. You're never gonna be there. Don't expect yourselves. Go out there in a Brazilian. You just touch the board, and that's it. You've got the ball. The substitution. They're gonna be tough. The They're gonna be hard. What is the question? We have to fucking fight. Is are you better than there? Are you are you trying better than there? Because even if we lose, forget it. If you show me that you guys put the effort in, I'll say you know respect for you because you really try. I don't want to see uh, uh, sad faces. I don't want to see uh, messing around on the pitch. I want to see players encouraging, working as a team. Talk to each other. Basic stuff that you guys learn. Basic stuff that you guys are doing and practicing for like a decade. This is the time to show up. Matěj Plch, Avoy MU Brno, midfielder. Nejvíce mi na něm líbí asi to, že můžou nevidomí provozovat. What I like best about blind football is that it is a regular team sport. 
Most of the sports for the visually impaired are individual sports, for example, swimming, cycling. I don't know any other team sport for the blind, apart from goalball. So for me, the best thing about blind football is that I can be a part of a team, I can cooperate with other people. I also like that it involves a lot of running around, which helps me improve my sense of orientation. You learn how to find your bearings in space, use information coming from various sources and deal with a lot of situations. So I think all these things help you improve in many ways. Martin Jelínek. V podstatě to můžeme rozdělit zase na tu rovinu emocí, kdy si myslím, že jim to může dát zážitek, který třeba do té doby nepoznali. I think blind football helps enhance the emotional aspect of one's personality, the joy of victory, the game and movement in general. The other aspect is not strictly sport related. It helps improve everyday life skills like communication, fitness and physical activity. It can compensate for some of the deficiencies caused by the impairment. Some blind people never really leave their local region or vicinity. But I, I've had to accept that players that aren't necessarily technically gifted or that are novices, they just want to play sometimes. So to give them the opportunity to come and travel, to play different games, <clears throat> travel even around England or even around their city. Vedat Sarikaya, MTV Stuttgart, forward. To play blind futsal, I think, is an art in a way, and I think it is a piece of freedom for all the people that play it. What I'm saying is, we can show the world that it is possible to play football and score goals, and, well, it's not as easy as it might look. I think sighted people should try it once, or they should watch us. When we have the chance to do it, why not do it? We might be blind, but we are not entirely dependent on things that we are not supposed to do. If we can do it, we do it, and we can. Rasmus Naries, FC St. Pauli Hamburg, Defender. Well, when a blind person wants to play football, this shows that a blind person is able to play football. And I personally feel really free of everything when I play. And that's the motivation too. Jefferson Gonçalves, ICB Bahia, Forward. Brazilian children dream of playing football. We always watch our national football team. Ours is a country crazy about football. We have won five World Cups in sighted football, so from the beginning we dream of becoming football players. At first the disability prevents us from playing, but as soon as we grow up and acquire skills, we have the five-a-side football and the opportunity to fulfill the dream. It is how things happened for me. I had this dream since I was a kid. Then I got the opportunity to become part of the national team and win cups with my club. It has been a wonderful experience and I hope to stay in this world of five-a-side football for a long time. Simon Hill, BFC Wooster, defender, captain. I think that the most impressive thing, because I've been lucky enough to play in different tournaments all over the, the world, and I was very impressed with the organisation, the, um, you know, the, the treatment of the teams, and it, the whole tour. You know, there was a lot of games to be played in a short space of time, but it, everything ran smoothly and. You know, it, it just meant that as, as players and coaches, we could just concentrate simply on playing our games rather than worrying about you know, everything else that was going on. And um, I think generally it was a good standard. All teams here were put on a really good show and performance. Um, and 
in the end it was a very close, closely fought contest. Lee Great Badge, BFC Worcester, forward. Everything had been thought of, so very thoughtful. And those are my thoughts about the country. And I'd love to come back again with my wife and my little boy and uh, to see more of the country. It's a very vibrant country. Uh, Dave, my coach, um, he's very descriptive in his coaching role. Uh, he was also descriptive uh, about the country. Uh, such vibrant, uh, colourful uh, buildings. Russell Weldon. The organisation of the tournament has been absolutely <coughs> fantastic. It's been unbelievable. One of the best tournaments I've been to. And I've been to an awful lot of tournaments. So it's been great how they've managed to get the turnaround so well, so smooth. It's run really nicely. Serdal Celebi, FC St. Pauli Hamburg, forward. Good organization, ideal organization. They thought it all through. They even thought of towels for showering here in the changing room. It was really nice of Brno to give us their changing room. I think there was no more changing rooms, so they had to change clothes in the hallway. That is really ideal, friendly hosting. David Mycock. I've been in quite a lot because obviously the university that I lecture in and Yitka and Lukas Mizilko, um, kind of, they came to England just to try and get blind football going, I don't know, four or five years ago on the back of nothing basically and just came over and just took a chance. They didn't even have any footballs, not really blindfolds, didn't know much about the game and to be honest I didn't know that much more than them. But a bit of enthusiasm, nice friendships, honesty, uh, trust, you know, building good relationships with people. That's what carried blind football forwards in England and the Czech Republic. Simon Hill. Yeah, the, the Czech Republic have already found a good group of, of young players if they can keep uh, working with them and, uh, and building their confidence and ability then you know, certainly within a couple of years there's no reason why they wouldn't be competing at the European Championships for certain. Jan Mrazek. I would very much like to invite everyone who wants to try it out. Just come and give it a go. It's really fun. Like a ride, like a rider, not easily offended.